Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter number three, pick up verse number nine. Been talking about time. Went through the twenty-eight uh, time two. What profit has he that worketh in that wherein he labored? I have seen the travail, labor with pain, which God has given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. There is labor with pain, sorrow, sweat. That's the curse. You can't beat it. You can't sit in an air-conditioned office and think, you know, I beat Genesis 3. Because if you don't sweat, you're not healthy. Because God has called man to labor and to sweat. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Agnosticism in verse 11. Also he, God, has set the world in their heart. So that no man can find out the work of God, making from the beginning to the end. Now we're going to go through the things here. And we're going to talk about the aspect of God again. Remember, we're looking at this book. What we see with our eyeball. <clears throat> we're not going to the eternal. We're not going to the holy. What these eyes can see. This is a worldly book in the Bible God has given to us to beat philosophy. Because philosophy takes the word and God out. Whereas Solomon writes philosophy with God, with the word, as far as the world. God has set the world. But who can find out the work of God? You know, let's just take for an example, and I don't know. But we say H2O is water. <coughs> Two hydrogens and one oxygen. What if it's not even that? We can't explain to the fullest gravity. Yet Job says that the earth hangeth on nothing. How? And we're shooting rockets and men in outer space to try to... We don't even know the answers here. Starvation. And drought. And pain and sorrow and death is happening. While the government spend multi-billion dollars to go somewhere where they're not going to get the answer. We haven't even solved this problem yet while we're trying to solve other problems. And find out the work that God made it from the beginning to the end. It's all the subject of the Lord Jesus Christ. It has been, it will be, and it is now. All about Jesus. And if your work is not about Jesus Christ, you will suffer loss. The whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is about Jesus. You go in the book of Chronicles and you read those boring names and you say, why? Matthew 1 and Luke 3. In there is the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. God cares about his son. And there is the tribe, it's the place, it's all about Jesus. you got to seek God to find out what your life is to be for the will of God for the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And when you deal with people on the streets, when you deal with people about their souls, there is none that do it bad. They all do good. I'm good. In general, yes. I don't know how much of the population is in jail or should be in jail. 
But haven't we all committed a crime somewhere if we were to nail it down that a, a theft is a theft and a lie is a lie? Shouldn't we not be ourselves in jail? Are we not good? For the Bible says, for there is none that doeth good. There is none righteous. We have broken the Ten Commandments. We ought to try to do good. We ought to do our best. But why? Why should I do my best on this earth where my neighbor comes in and, and does his worst? Why should I do my best when a co-worker will step all over me to get the best? Why should I do good when when a person out there does wrong and causes the life of someone else? What is the purpose of doing good? And without God in the Bible, without God, what is good? Without the Bible, what is right? And wrong. God is love, yes. What is love without God? If the agnostics or the or the atheists, if there's no God, the evolutionists, Big Bang, where does our law courts come from? Where does the word guilty and innocent come from? If there's no God. You will find in jails that there are murderers in jail that, hey, they did perfectly right and will do it again. And not even bit sorry. What is good? My good may not be your good. Where do I get good? And also that every man should eat and drink. Or you die. Oh, you mean you want to be the person that, you know, overeat and over drink. And you want to take the word drink as an alcohol. I don't see alcohol. You read alcohol. Yeah, that's what you want. See, when I said eat and drink, then you read the word marry. Eat, drink, and be merry. But that's not what the verse says. It's eat and drink, enjoy the good of his labor. It is a gift of God. You mean that lousy job that you have, that you're able to drink and pay your bills? That is a gift of God. God can so mess up your stomach. I remember there's a period of time with my grandfather, a series of medical problems that he had. He had a tube put in his stomach. And his eating was what, what went into that tube. It was a nutritious drink that he would never even taste. He'd never get the flavor of it. Now he had his nutrition provided yes and comical kind of way some of the things you know would say vanilla would say he, he wouldn't taste that yet with all the labors and as a hard working man he was in his own business he never advertised his business but he got much work by the word of mouth he was able to bless God for his job and to eat and drink. And never a day in his life he ever touched alcohol. His eating would be a bowl of vanilla ice cream. Nothing extra. Just plain and simple. Coffee would be the, uh, the instant coffee with cream and sugar. He would eat pork or meat with nothing on it, just the meat as it was. 
And Jesus says, let us be content. Paul says, with food and raiment. If you can eat and you can drink, and you got a lousy job, you're under in the gift of God. You might as well just say, God, here's a receipt for my job. I like to re exchange it. I don't appreciate it. It's an ugly sweater, Lord. It don't fit me. Now, you don't see God. Why don't you take your aunt that, that went to the store and with her heart bought you something? Why don't you take her with you? You go back to the store and you tell them reason why you're re true reason in front of her in front of her why you're exchanging her gift. All right, granted, maybe the, the the wrong size, but really, would you have enough nerve to tell her or tell God, you know what? I just not appreciate it. I expect better. Well, none of us has ever fell into that. One. You know, Solomon is seen. He's seen a bunch of people. They're complaining and griping, and we do it. We, W E, we do it. And then we turn around and say, oh, we love God. I know theism. I know that whatsoever God do it, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God do with it that men should fear before him. Okay, let's take salvation of God by the blood, by the blood, and by the finished work of Calvary, the death, burial, and resurrection, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is salvation. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. What can men add to it? Absolutely nothing. What do men add to it? Rock bands, alcohol parties, pool tables. Uh, Puppetry, whatever you want to do. Vacation Bible. You say there's something wrong with Vacation Bible? Yeah, how much of it is really out of the Bible? And that one of ten parts of the Vacation Bible, you know, the food and snacks, the play time, the trophy time. Oh, yeah, we do get a little Bible reading in time. Is it really a Bible story or are you reading another story outside of the Bible? So you can't put into God what God did not put there. You can't say, well, one day some, nothing came from something, and here we are, besides the fact is that God said, in the beginning, God speaking, I made the heaven and earth. You can't just say, well, Jesus was a wonderful teacher. Yeah, he's a wonderful teacher. He's also the son of God. He's also God. See, that shoots down major religion. I'm not going to get saved by eating a cookie and drinking... How about chalice? <coughs> Pardon me. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to be saved by peddling anything. I can't be saved by shedding my own blood, whereas I can't be saved by shedding someone else's blood. God has set. God says one day that there is a a a star called Wormwood that's coming. In Revelation. I don't care if you put retro rockets on the earth and put all kinds of gizmos on the earth. You can't stop the earth and avoid that comet or that star that God says is going to come. You can't stop it. The Bible says that the earth is going to burn up. You can't stop it. Even if you stop as an entire state, now listen to this, one state out of the union wants to end all plastic shopping bags. Whereas you got 49 other states that are still doing it. One versus 49. You're not going to do it. We're going to stop the word of God. Really? I still hold it in my lap. 
You know how many times this has been burned, has been uh, people have been burned, people have been slaughtered, people have been killed. This has been banned. The entire era of history called the Dark Ages was when the Bible was closed and you couldn't stop it. Let's stop the Jews. You know how many people have tried to stop the Jews? God said, as the sand of the sea, as the stars of heaven. So there are things that God has set into motion. Satan will lose. You're not going to stop it. He's not going to stop it. Matter of fact, the Bible records he has lost. He's just living out his last years. To loss, defeat. That which have been is now. And that which is to be has already been. And God requires that which is past. That's a mouthful. There's nothing new under the sun. Communications, whether you do it talking to someone's ear or doing it electronically, uh, walking down the street until you walk into a light pole, it's still communication. Whether you're walking to the laundromat or you're driving a, a, the most fancy, expensive car in the world, you're still going from point A to B. What have you changed? You're living outside underneath a tree or you're living in a, a, a mansion? You still got four walls and a ceiling. Listen, there are little huts in Africa. They got one wall if it's round and a little grass and no floor besides dirt. And it's the same thing you got. Listen, you divide the male from the females and, 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 and strip them. They're the same. The females are the females and the males are the males. There's no difference. What are you going to change? You're going to have operations? Oh, okay, but your life is not going to be the same. And more, moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. So if you look at this world, you look at the earth, you study, judgment will speak. That wickedness was there. You can see wickedness. And the place of righteousness. Church. You think of a church, weren't you? Place of righteousness. And yet, that iniquity was there too. Solomon doesn't know anything about the rapture. He doesn't know anything about Jesus Christ. He's looked at this earth and said, you know what? There's wickedness. I'll go into that clean place. I'll go to the temple if, the te if he's built the temple by now. And you know what? There's wickedness there too. You know when Jesus walked in the temple where God's place was? He found wickedness. He found iniquity. In a in a Pharisee's home, he, he found iniquity, and he found one woman that loved him. Iniquity is everywhere. No family is perfect, no church is perfect. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. Now this is where you run into that one general judgment. And yes, here it is. But when was the last time Solomon read the book of Revelation? When did Solomon study the Gospel of Matthew? When did Solomon sit down on a tree log with, with the Apostle Paul and have a conversation with him? You see? Solomon did not know the eternal. He couldn't even tell you with all his wisdom where he would go when he died. 
We're not even told, the Jews were not even told about Abraham's bosom to Luke 16. So as far as the eyes of Solomon, guess what? He is not going to see the judgment seat of Christ. There are going to be some of the Gentiles around his time will be at the great white throne judgment. Now it says the names were, were checked in the book of life in the book. If their names were found, then they went in. There are saved people at the great white throne judgment. But you got to look at dispensation. you got to look at the errors of the Bible. I mean error. I don't mean error as in wrong. You got the Jewish nation, you got the Gentile nation, you got the Christian, the church age, you got the tribulation period. There's a new heaven, new Jerusalem, and new earth. The earth goes to the Jews, new Jerusalem goes to the Christians, the, the new heavens go to the Gentiles. Solomon had no idea. He didn't even know about the Messiah that would show up 977 years there about later. And he's long dead. So yes, the Bible teaches one judgment. But with what knowledge did they have of Jesus and the apostles' teachings? Paul spoke of mysteries that were never known. Even Peter writes, I think it's 2 Peter, close the book. He says, Paul has written some things, and wow, boy, he writes some things that are so hard to understand. Peter the Jew wrote, listened to Paul and, 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 and heard Paul's writings and said, Woo! You imagine what they would have been to Solomon, an Old Testament Jew? <coughs> now see Satan takes something that's right and he twists it yes there is one, speaking of one judgment they had no idea what the church age and the judgment seat of Christ and the bride of Christ and all that they had no idea so this it would be the great white throne judgment and yes the righteous and the wicked will stand there. And if you read Revelation 20, if their names are in the book, they, they, they get a pass. They go through. They're saved by their works because they're not in the church age. Naming the Syrianite. Nebuchadnezzar the Babylonian. Cyrus. I believe are going to be in heaven. And they didn't obey the law. Move on. I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men. Now this is naturalism. That God might manifest them. And that they might see they themselves are beasts. Evolution. Well look at that. I look like I come from a monkey. A monkey looks like me. So here I am. I got part of a tailbone that was that was that looks like a monk, that looks like a tail. I'll even call it tailbone. Wonder what God calls it. I got these body parts in me that you know I don't need no more. But way back when, with my ancestors and you know, it's funny if you look like a jackass, what would you have called yourself? Descendants of a donkey. I don't know. I don't know if you ever asked the ape one day if he were to look at human beings all that. I wonder if you offended the ape by saying we come from them. The last time I knew, I never knew an ape that that had worry, intentions, adultery, and uh, murder, and anything like that. Have you ever seen an ape in an ape tree with an ape, ape family with all those problems? How come we have them? I, last time I checked, when I went into the pharmacy, I didn't see apes walking in there to get high blood pressure pills. But 
but it's anything but God. It says, I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that God might manifest them and that they might see they that they themselves are beasts. In general, if you leave man to man, it's me first and you next. That's where it is. You know why evolution is so prone today? Because man in his best state is wicked. The heart is deceitful above all things. Why is divorce large today? Because it's what I want from you, and I get what I want from you, and then when I'm done with you, I'll throw you away. I don't care. That's what divorce is. And the stupid country the United States makes me get this piece of paper. It's what it is. There are women today that are sacrificing embryos, life, so they can live on their career, live on their sexual fantasies and everything else like that, and who cares about motherhood? There are men out there who have fathered children and don't even know who or how many are of his loins. Who cares? I, I'm going to go do my thing. There are women out there today are doing things that men do that their body was never designed to do. And yet today, it's amazing. You walk into a place and a woman comes in and every seat's taken. Not one man today will get up for that woman. Listen, you women stood up for rights. You lost your seat. Man today looks out for his own interest. There is no good we talked about. I'll give five thousand dollars to this organization. Then you call the newspaper, and you know, you got your gratification, your insurance. Re I mean, your your IRS receipt. So you can have the government to take give you back what you gave to somebody. See, it comes down to, did you do it for Christ or did you do it for self? <coughs> That's what it comes down to. Do you love your wife because of who she is and what she is, or do you just love her for what you can get? Do you love your husband for what he is and who he is, or because of the money and the job and the position that you can get? When it's all gone, when one of you are in a hospital bed, are you still going like the Energizer Bunny? Or was it just for B? See, an animal looks out for himself. There are animals that will eat their young so they can survive. That was another beastly form of abortion. By the way, when Israel was, was surrounded by Babylon, and Babylon came and seized the city, they, women were eating their babies. They were eating their babies in Solomon's time. No, it wasn't Solomon's time. There was another king that we boiled our baby and she hid her baby. I'm, I apologize. That wasn't Solomon's time. But it came to be. Ahab, I believe it was, but I can be wrong. So now we're talking about beasts. And I'm going to say something that may upset some people pretty soon. we got about 15 minutes and I'm going to say it. And if you don't like it, we're going to read it in the Bible. I'm going to, I'm going to upset you very much. I'm going to disprove and disallow what you think to what God says. Because I know a person out there who has told me with their own lips... Serious as serious can be with Jesus is the reason for the season that she has witnessed to her dogs and they have received Christ as their Savior. Honest to God.
For that which befalleth the sons of men, befalleth the beast. All right, let's see what Solomon is going to say what man and beast is like now. I gave you a little dispensation kind of thing. But we're going to read scripture. scripture. We're going to read the whole thing. You know, judge not least you be judged. Let's read the rest of the verses now, okay? Even one thing that befalls them. As one dieth, <coughs> so dieth the other. All right, let's deal with that one. I am going to die like my chihuahua is going to die. Death. Like one time we were downtown, this, this bird just fell out of the sky and hit the, the sidewalk. He's dead. That's what's going to happen to my wife. She's not going to fall out of the sky. She's going to die like that bird died. The Lord tarry. When you see an animal scattered on the highway, it's dead. That animal's going to die like my daughter died. Death. Now that animal had no idea. He, he, he got up that morning and didn't think I was going to be hit by a Ford Explorer or whatever. I'm just going to walk and go through life and boom, I'm dead. That's what animals and, and humans do. They die. What do we have in common as far as this book goes with animals and humans? They are born. We are born. They die. We die. How about that? So what we're looking at as far as the beast, Solomon could have been, I don't know, he could have been walking down the street and there's a dead animal. Gee, that's what's going to happen to me one day. Maybe one of his great horses died. I don't know. But what happened to that beast is going to happen to me. That's what he's saying. Yeah, they all have one breath. I inhale my chihuahua's breath. I inhale my wife's breath. I inhale a robin's breath. You take me to a stable, I will inhale horse's breath. You take me to a pigsty, I will inhale hog's breath. And according to Genesis 2, with man, that breath is the breath of life. And that is giving to God, to us. Had God not breathed in us, Adam would have been just laying there on the ground. He told Ezekiel the valley to dry bones, prophesied to those bones. You know, them bones came to them bones and the sinews and the muscles and the skin. Then he said, prophesy to the wind. <coughs> I gotta apologize, I've been sick and my throat is still a little ticklish. Yeah, they all have one breath. So that a man has no permanence, superiority above the beast. Now, Genesis said we have dominion over the animal. Now, is Solomon contradicting what Moses wrote through God? No. We have dominion over animals. We decide if we want to have pork chops or not. The, pork, the pig never sits down and says, do I want human chops? Never. For all is vanity. In the context of what we're talking about, we all die. Animals and humans. Where's the superiority in that one? We may kill animals to eat them, but are going to die. More animals are killed by humans to eat then animals are killed, I mean animals that kill humans to eat. I'm pretty safe and sure on that one. But you know what? We all die. Good news? <laughs> Happy? Hurrah! There are pet cemeteries just as much as there are human cemeteries. 
You can have a funeral for your pet as much as you can have a cremation for your pet. As you can do with humans. They die. And that all goes back to the curse of Genesis 3. You know animals are under the curse that Adam and Eve took that fruit. Even the animals suffer from Adam. How do you like that one? God's not fair. He he killed all those babies and all those people. He also killed all the animals too. Because he told Adam not to take not to eat that fruit and you the man, you the human. You disobeyed God. Animals were not to have death either. Can you imagine what kind of world it would have been? All bunch of vegetarians read about the, the lion and the ox eating straw together. This earth being populated by animals and by humans. No pain, no sorrow, no death. You didn't think about the you didn't think about the animals, did you? All die. Our dog is going to die. I'm going to die. My dog and I have best chance of being hit by a car and dying. Dogs today are dying of human. Because they get fed more human food today than they do their own dog food. And they're getting the same infirmities that we're getting. That's a proven fact. Alright. All go onto one place. Pantheism. All are of dust. So, Fifi goes to heaven, because I'm going to heaven. Samson the dog will go to heaven, because I'm going to heaven. Morris will go to heaven, because I'm going to heaven. Comma. It's not a period. And all turn to dust again. Not only do the animals die, not only will I die as man. If you if if I were to ride a horse or a donkey, and I were to die somewhere where nobody would find my body, and the horse is whatever I'm riding. Eventually, within time, you will find the bones of me and the bones of the animal I was riding. Where did everything else go? Dust. We were eaten by bugs, eaten by birds. And then we became dung. And then the dung hardened and broke down and became dust. Jezebel in the Bible became dog poop. And the dog poop hardened, and within time it became flaky and dusty. And she she turned to dust, being dog poop. So the common element that we have with with the beast is: we are born, we die, we go to dust. We haven't read anything about heaven yet. Life, we eat, we drink. We enjoy our labor. Ants don't do that. And ants are the hardest working little guys who you want to call them. There's never been an ant ball. They have not. You can get an ant farm. You don't have them see having a dance. They don't party. They work. They work. They work. They die. They take the dead ant and they throw them out in the hole.
Who? Get 21 now. <clears throat> Who knows the spirit of man? Body, soul, spirit. The body goes to dust. The spirit of man goeth upward. And the spirit of the beast, what we've been talking about, that goeth downward to the earth. You know what the difference of our spirit is? Genesis 2 says God breathed into man, he became a living soul. It did not say that about the animal. Go back and read Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. God did not breathe in an animal. <coughs> so when we die, our spirit goes back to God. When an animal dies, their spirit goes back to the ground. The Native Americans had it right. The great spirit. Well, the great spirit of the, of the deer, or whatever they were hunting, went back to the ground, to the dirt. Man goes upward. All dogs do not go to heaven. No dogs do. When they die, when kitty dies, when parrot dies, when parakeet dies, when goldfish die, goldfish have their own little territory they go through. They all end up in the sewer plant. When an animal dies, it dies. That's it. Now that is Nihilism, N I H I L I S M. With this verse, you go to Psalms 104, verse 29. Your spirit as a man goes back to God, animal spirits goes to the dirt. You would say Mother Earth, but there's no such thing as Mother Earth. So you would take this verse one step, they go to Mother Earth. Mother Nature. There is no thing. Find it in the Bible. It's a lie. It's a Pharisee. Just like Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy. It's not there. I'm sorry to break your bubble, but animals do not go to heaven. Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better that a man should rejoice in his own works. <clears throat> It's a gift of God, verse 13. God made you to be a carpenter. Be the best carpenter you can. Plumber, be the best plumber. Whatever you do, it's a gift of God. This is not the works of salvation. This is Solomon looking at the world. Hey, look at that guy who works on trees. Look how happy he is. God has blessed him to work with trees. He's not talking about some bowing down before a, a, a idol. The only way he could be talking about the temple is when he sees a priest doing what his priestly duties are. And he's doing it for the enjoyment of God. For them, God would give him the best portion. He's looking at his servants or somebody who played the music for him that we did, just did a few chapters ago. Hey, they're doing it because they enjoy doing it. That's a gift of God. And you know what? He's not talking about a lost or a saved person. Imagine all the things that God has given to the unjust like rain. And they don't give God the, the glory. Did you know that we're passing Christmas? That there's many gifts that God has given you? And if you're unsaved, you will be held accountable for all the gifts that God gave you and you enjoyed and those that you rejected and took back, like Jesus Christ. Christian, do you know that there are gifts that God has given you that you just take them for granted? And you're going to give an account. You know, it's not like Aunt Bertha's coming over and her to find those gifts that she gave us like three Christmases ago. 
Nothing better that a man should rejoice in his own works. For that is his portion. That is something that God's given. God has given to all men to work. Before the fall, Genesis 2, God made Adam a husbandman of the Garden of Eden. You know what, welfare recipient? God has given you a gift to do work. Even this Obama administration that we have, there is a work for you to do. For that is his portion, for who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? You don't need to know about the future. You don't need about tea leaves, crystal balls, and all that. You just live for today. And that's what a Christian is told. Live for today. You don't know what tomorrow holds. If you're lost, you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior today because you don't know what tonight holds. There's going to be a lot of drunk people out tonight. You may not come home. God's giving you a job. God's giving you work. That's a gift. You better thank Him for it. I know you'll have troubles at work. Everybody does. Look at me. Look who I am. You're going to die just like a dog. And they're going to bury you just like a dog. And not everybody gets a stone marker like a dog. But your breath will go to God, lost or saved. Your soul will go off into eternity. Your body will be dust. So don't get a big shot who who, who you think you are. There are other things that, that humans and animals do. We eat, we drink. We also have to relieve ourselves. We sleep. And we die. See, there's a time to be born, there's, time, there's a time to die, and there's a time to work. That's what this chapter outlines. Labor. All the 28 things we did in, in the first part, last the other night's message, they're all labor. We talked about labor. And talk about, don't lift yourself up more than what you are. The only difference between man and animals, man can be saved. Animals cannot.